The rapid and intense urbanization of the world's population challenges cities to densify to equitably meet rising housing demands while still maintaining the quality of public spaces such as streets and parks. Management of direct daylight is a key factor in defining the quality of these spaces. Shadows are both desirable and detrimental. Shadows are beneficial by reducing the urban heat island effect or by providing shade in summer. On the other hand, shadows can make public spaces dark and uncomfortable during cooler months or can inhibit vegetation growth. It is therefore important to maintain a balance in the amount of shadows cast by buildings in the city. In this work, we are interested in quantifying the amount of time a region is in shadow through the accumulation of shadows over different time periods of interest. This is accomplished through a simple yet efficient approach that tracks the movement of shadows over time instead of explicitly tracking the movement of the sun. The main idea behind our approach is the following. Given a relatively short time interval, the movement of the sun during this interval is linear. Consider a point P1 on the ground that is in shadow at time T1. Let the point S on the building be the cause of shadow of P1 at T1. With changing time, the shadow cast moves to point P2, then P3, and so on. Given an appropriately short amount of time, note that this movement is linear within this interval. We make use of this critical observation to efficiently accumulate shadows. Shadow accrual maps extend shadow maps to maintain depth values over a time. It is essentially a 3D texture in which each 2D slice corresponds to a time step. It is computed as follows. Assume that the view plane is along the ground. Let the projection of a point S be pixel P1 at time T1. Let the point P2 be the projection of S at time T2. The location of the pixel, as well as the depth value for a given time step, is computed by linearly interpolating between P1 and P2. The corresponding 2D slice stores the depth value at the identified pixel. Now consider a point P for which the shadow accumulation is to be computed. The start and end pixels on the shadow plane are identified as before by projecting the point at T1 and T2, and the location over different time steps is obtained by linear interpolation. The depth values at different time steps are then compared with the depth of the corresponding pixels and then combined to obtain the accumulated shadow. Since shadow accrual maps are based on shadow maps, the well-known issues such as aliasing and shadow acne are also carried over. For more accurate analysis, the linear shadow movement property can also be combined with ray tracing to efficiently accumulate shadows using inverse accrual maps as follows. Consider a point P1 on the ground. Its shadow source at time T1 is identified by tracing a ray towards the sun. Let the shadow due to S at time T2 be on P2. The inverse accrual map maps point P1 to point P2. The shadow accumulation is then computed by drawing all lines between pairs of points obtained from the inverse accrual map. We design a visual analysis framework called Shadow Profiler that allows the interactive exploration of shadows and the computation of the shadow properties over varying time periods. Shadow Profiler supports two modes of operation from which the users can choose. The exploration mode uses shadow accrual maps and allows users to interactively explore shadows over a city. Inverse accrual maps, being more accurate, is used in the analysis mode. The shadow accumulation quantities are visualized as a heat map. We now present an example of how our framework can be used to evaluate the impact of individual buildings. Refer to the paper for a complete list of features of Shadow Profiler. Here, we import skyscrapers currently under construction south of Central Park. The gradient indicates the shadow accrual just for that building. Alternatively, users can remove a building or a set of buildings and see the relative improvement in a blue gradient. Here is the improvement when you remove the Time Warner Center. This can be used to test development or understanding which buildings contribute the most shadow. Such citywide analysis and visual interaction is not possible using existing tools. By allowing the quantification of shadows corresponding to a single or multiple buildings across time ranges, our framework facilitates more informed decision making in the design of buildings, city planning, and public policy.